Ah, weary traveller, welcome to our glorious hotel. Please do make yourself comfortable by the fire. It's quite a dreary night after all. Unfortunately, our Wi-Fi is down, but no matter. The paranormal scholar and I will keep you very entertained by sharing the stories of some of our previous guests. I'm sure you will find them quite extraordinary. Number 1 In the early 1990s, I worked as a sous chef at the Hotel Colorado in Glenwood Springs. The employees there went to great lengths to tell me all of the juicy ghost stories associated with the place. Forbidden rooms, labyrinth basements, hauntings and the like. I never really paid it any mind, but towards the end of my tenure there, two very specific incidences led me to seek employment elsewhere. The kitchen in this place was built in the late 18th century, so think big, very tall ceilings and damn near ancient fittings and equipment. The first incident happened late at night on what we used to call the bar line. It was a small kitchen off the main kitchen galley. They had a late party in the bar and I was finishing up a long day shift. I had made a lot of food for the party and had to clean a big ass old pot. I had already finished everything else clean up wise and all I had left was to dry and hang this big ass old pot. The bar line had an overhead pot hangy thing with a giant hook to hold the pots by the handles. The hooks were four to five inches deep and could honestly have been used to hang beef. I dried the pot and slipped it on the hook and made my way around the corner to the break room to clock out and grab my stuff. I am the only one in the kitchen. So I go through and start to turn off the lights and make my way to the back delivery door. As I laid my hand on the doorknob, a tremendous clang shot through the whole kitchen area. It sounded like a cannon had gone off and made me jump about three feet off the ground. My heart was racing and my mind was going a mile a minute. I immediately turned all the lights back on and gave out the old, Is anyone there? No one was there. I grabbed the biggest butcher knife we had, affectionately named Old Choppy, and started to slowly ninja my way through the galley, seeking out whatever the hell had made that sound. After a brief but thorough search, I determined that it must have come from the bar line. Great. Nothing like a blind corner and a creepy ass activity to make a man feel special. I slowly, and I mean slowly, made my way around the corner, with the ever faithful Choppy guiding the way. Lo and behold, the pot I had hung up was laying prostate on the ground. I looked up at the hook as well. How could it have possibly jumped off a five inch hook? I was really disturbed by this. I picked up the pot and hung it up on the hook, on the opposite side of the pot hanger, and quickly made my way out of there. Here's the kicker. As I locked the door from the outside, boom. The sound of a pot hitting the ground, but muffled through the locked door, rings across the dark and empty parking lot. Like any smart man, I immediately noped out of there and went home. It wasn't until I got to bed that I realised I had the breakfast shift the next day. The next morning, I got in around 6, and the kitchen had already been opened by the kitchen manager who was putting around getting ready for the banquet later that day. I asked her if anyone had been on the back bar line that morning, and she said no. So I decided to go check it out quickly, and then get on with my day. 
I rounded the corner, and the pot was still on the hook. This was deeply disturbing to me, and I made every effort from that moment to never be on the bar line alone. The second incident was enough to make me quit. We had a crazy day of prep ahead of us as we had multiple functions that weekend, including our famous Sunday brunch in the Colorado room. The head chef asked me to come in super early that Sunday so that we could be ready for the two parties and the brunch. I arrived around 4.30 in the morning with reinforcements scheduled at 5.30. So I immediately went into arsehole and elbow mode as I had a mountain of stuff to get done. I was working on the main line which faces the Colorado room's main serving doors. However, the line itself faces back into the kitchen galley so that your back is to the dining room whilst working on the line. I am deep into work mode, when weird sounds start to penetrate my veil of concentration. It sort of sounds like a kid <laughs> playing in the dining room. My subconscious mind immediately discounts this as not my problem, and I don't even break my stride on the line. After a few moments, a niggling thought is itching my brain that won't go away. I distinctly remember a feeling of wrongness slowly descend upon me, and then hit me. What the hell are kids doing playing in the Colorado room at 4.30 in the morning? I instantly had that cold, icy feeling shoot up my spine, and then just out of the corner of my vision, I see the door to the Colorado room swing open, just a bit, and I begin to hear the unmistakable sound of a rubber ball bouncing into the kitchen. As I swing my gaze quickly to the left, I see a red rubber kickball clear as day bounce into the galley with the far off sound of a child's <laughs> laughter floating through the Colorado room. I just froze. I have never been that freaked out in my entire life. My breath came to ragged grasps and I stood there rooted to the spot. I must have stood stock still for a full minute, and then I hear the rear doors open and the sound of familiar voices. My reinforcements were there. I have never been more relieved to hear other people's voices other than that moment. The girl who was helping me that morning makes her way to the main line. She immediately stops in her tracks when she sees me. And I shit you not, she says, You look like you've seen a ghost. I quickly retell the tale to her, and the prep boy searches the galley for the ball but to no avail. They turn on the lights in the Colorado room to full blast, and go figure, no ghost children. I put in my two weeks notice in the following day. The manager of the hotel asked me to sit down with him a few days later, after I inquired about a reference. He had heard my tale and wanted to chat to me about it. And boy, did he have a tale to tell. I thought that I had heard all the tales associated with the alleged hauntings of the Hotel Colorado, but apparently, she still kept some secrets. It turns out that not long after the hotel opened, a little girl accidentally chased her red ball off the fifth floor balcony and fell to her death. She is seen frequently on the fifth floor in Victorian dress and has even been reported playing catch with some of the guest's children. Her red ball was famous among workers of the hotel in previous generations and its ghostly appearance frequented the banquet rooms, and yes, the kitchens too. Number 2 My uncle just got married. For their honeymoon, he, his new wife, and her daughter went to stay in a cabin on Big Bear Mountain in Southern California. They arrived, unpacked their luggage, and settled in for a three-day stay. 
On the last night, my uncle was up watching TV very late by himself, his wife and stepdaughter having already gone to bed. Needing to use the restroom, he got up, did his business, then exited the room. The only light on in the whole cabin is that from the TV in the living room, but it was bright enough to light the whole living room and part of the hallway. As he opened the door to the restroom, he saw his wife walk down towards the kitchen. He figured that she had got up because she was hungry, so went to go and talk with her. He followed after her, but when she reached the end of the hallway, she turned slightly in the direction of the kitchen, before running at full speed into the room. She was fast. In fact, faster than any human should be. At this point, my uncle doubted what he was seeing. This figure was wearing a long flowing white gown, similar to the one his wife had worn to bed, and she had the same, slightly longer than shoulder length hair. But this figure wasn't his wife. He took a few steps back, and peeked into the room where his wife and stepdaughter were supposed to be asleep. They were both there in bed, asleep. Needless to say, he couldn't sleep after that. When they left the next morning, my uncle called the guy who he had rented the cabin from and said, Hey, you didn't tell me this cabin was haunted. To his surprise, the guy replied, Oh, you saw her? Her. He said her. My uncle hadn't specified what he had seen. That means that he had not been the only one to have seen the speedster she-ghost that was haunting that cabin. Number 3 My dad and godfather are both pretty high flyers in a European-based microelectronics company. Basically, they fly everyone to some remote, usually romantic, tiny village with old, classy, converted castle-style homes for meetings and some other r and &R events every four months. Anyway, Dan and Godfather fly in together into Italy and train slash bus their way to the small village where their meetings would be held. My Godfather hears that the hotel is haunted. He asks for the turret room. Three rooms stacked on top of each other. The lower two are being renovated and were completely empty that weekend. So he gets to the top room. My dad, being less Ghostbuster brave, opts for a room in the body of the hotel with the rest of the gang. Let me first say that when my grandfather was probably a Spartan in his past life, I mean it. He's French-Italian manly as the old spice guy, and basically fearless. This is a guy who once rode his motorbike from Western Europe somehow, got behind the Berlin Wall in the late 70s and 80s, and ended up penniless on the Russian border before they sent him back. At 50, he's planning a motorbike trip down from the US to the tip of Chile slash Argentina, and once when he accidentally got locked in his own office, he crawled down six stories of air vents to get out. Yes, we already had cell phones then. He's always just been slightly insane and genuinely fearless. Night begins. He laughs off some of the hotel staff's worries at dinner. Says his good nights and heads to the turret room. As he described it to me, he stripped off and went into the bath. And then turned to shave whilst the tub filled. The mirror steamed up though, and he had to stop shaving and stepped back into the tub. It's cold. He's a little weirded out because he felt it warm a moment ago. He chalks it up to old piping, drains the bath and reruns it. Second time, mirror fogs up again. Water is hot and he marinates. After his bath, he's preparing his slides for the meeting the next day and hears noise slash talking from the empty rooms downstairs. He thinks it's weird, but assumes that the hotel must have run out of rooms and checked people in in desperation. He keeps working. He then hears what sounds like footsteps from the floor above him. Now he gets a little iffy. 
he's on the top floor of the turret. Above him is nothing but a really steep sloping tile roof. No one should be up there, certainly not at night. He's adamant it was footsteps that must have echoed through the roof through the wooden beams into his room. It wasn't raining, he checked. Slightly creeped, he finishes his slides and gets ready for bed. According to him, the blankets would not stay on all night. He covered himself up to his neck and woke up with the blankets on the floor three times. The last time he woke up, the blankets were draped on the chair he was sitting on whilst he was working, a good three paces away at least. Thoroughly creeped out now. He decides, no blankets, it's fine. Rolls over and tries to sleep. He wakes up when the bed suddenly thumps hard against the wall. He said three to five times of just solid thumping, the headboard against the wall. He was not moving at all, and it was just the bed moving independently. He'd had it. He turns on all the lights and grabs his stuff and runs out the room. There's no corridor in the turret, just stairs down to the body of the hotel. And he runs down them and basically camps in the quiet corridor outside my dad's room. According to him, the rest of the hotel is dead quiet. Morning comes, and he requests a different room and gets laughed at by colleagues. Then asks if guests had checked in after he did, because of the voices drifting upstairs on the night before. Front desk confirm that no one checked in. No members of staff go into the turret room at night without request from the guest, because they know that it's damn well haunted. Moral of the story is, if you're going to brave the haunted room, you're not gonna have a good time. Number four. Let's say I was glad that one day of training was all I needed to say that I didn't want to work at this particular hotel. I used to work in the hotel industry, but had left the profession for a year due to my course at university getting quite difficult for a couple of semesters. I came back into it looking to do some part-time work manning the front desk on Friday and Saturday nights. The particular hotel I applied to work at was built so that there was a car park level directly above the reception and main entrance area. Guests could only access it after calling the front desk, and you would have to manually walk through the car park to open the gated entrance. Nobody else had access to it, only people at the front desk. I was going through the whole on-the-job training thing when the receptionist who was training me told me some stories about the hotel including all of the suicides they've had. On his watch alone, three people had jumped or fallen from the balcony and landed in the car park area. I will never forget how he described the noise of them hitting the car park. He said it sounded like a bomb had gone off and the whole reception area would shake for a couple of seconds. He then told me about the incidents of staff, especially porters, seeing shadows and people in their rearview mirror when moving the cars around to make room for other cars. There was one story where someone who had newly started working at the hotel was called on by a guest to grab something out of the car. He had only gone up to the car park level for a couple of minutes when housekeeping staff heard screaming coming from that level. The new member of staff ran down the stairwell frantically opening the door into the main foyer. Luckily, there weren't any guests checking in at that very moment, as he collapsed on the floor, screaming that he had saw someone walk up to the car and peer into the window while he was searching for whatever it was the guest had asked him to grab. Hey guys, it's Mort here, and thank you so much for listening. I want to give a huge shout out to my incredibly talented artist and Jexy Art for making the thumbnail for this video. And also to the Paranormal Scholar for their outstanding narrations. We have four more paranormal stories over on their channel. And I assure you, the best is certainly yet to come. So follow me over 
you don't want to miss it. Before you go though, if you enjoyed the video please leave a thumbs up so that I know you liked it, and whilst you're at it, why not hit the subscribe button, because you won't want to miss what's next. But for now guys I'm going to sign off, stay awesome, and I'll see you in part 2.